Today we're joined by Aaron Popelka from uh, the Kansas Livestock Association. We're actually at the KLA office here in Topeka. And Aaron, thanks for joining us. We're kind of wrapping up our legislative uh, session. It's a little longer than we expected. Yep. Thanks, Brian. Yes, it was a, it was a record setter. I believe 113 days. Normally these sessions are slated for 90, uh, so we set a new record. But I, I don't think that's a record that we wanted to set. Uh, agriculture seems to maybe escaped with minimal impact. Is that kind of right? I think for the most part that's true. Most of the, uh, you know, the main uh, topic of discussion at the end of session was uh, taxes. Uh, and most of what they settled on were broad-based tax policies. An increase in the sales tax rate from 615 to 65. Uh, the uh, income taxes, uh, the, the rate structures froze at 2.7 and 4.6 until year 2018. Uh, and um, one small tweak in the business income exemption, they're now going to tax what's called guaranteed payments to partners. Uh, but, you know, we got away, we, we didn't have uh, too many impacts from the property tax and sales tax that many legislators talked about and indeed wanted to uh, uh, exact on agriculture. Well, looking at it, this was maybe a band-aid for where we're at for the next couple of years. I mean, I know there's some issues that are gonna be brought up over the next couple of years. What are those issues? Yeah, so um, where they ended up, uh, the budget is very, very tight. In fact, they gave the budget director uh, uh, additional authority to cut to get to $100 million ending balance uh, and take it where he needed to. Uh, so we're going to be under the gun. And one of the couple areas that we're going to immediately be called in up, uh, up to the capital for hearings next session is on sales tax exemptions. Uh, many of the legislators um, wanted to repeal all or sunset all the sales tax exemptions in the year 2019 and then create a commission to review to review these exemptions, we were successful in stopping that, but uh, to get a vote from some of those senators, uh, what we ended up with uh, was uh, told, you will come back beginning next year and we will talk about uh, potential of repealing exemptions. So uh, farm machinery, uh, sales tax exemption, uh, and uh, some others are definitely gonna be under the gun. What do you mean by sunset? Uh, basically, the, way, the, the dra way it was drafted was that uh, most of the exemptions that set for some business to business, and that was kind of fuzzy as to what those were, but basically when January 1st of 2019 got here, they would automatically disappear unless they're put back into law. Perfect. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to do our second segment with Aaron Popelka at the KLA office. you are watching Kansas Ag Report. We'll see you in just a minute. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Farmers Insurance, your best protection against the unexpected. Call Agent Dan Key at 785-408-5459. Grass and grain, online or in the mail. Keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com. Blue River Traders, the finest selection of Western-style furniture for your home. BlueRiverTraders.com We're joined today by Aaron Popelka from the Kansas Livestock Association. As a matter of fact, we're at the KLA office here in Topeka. And Aaron, we're kind of wrapping up uh, the legislative session. Uh, we started this four months ago, we kind of gave us updates once a month. But one of the things that we kind of touched on in the first segment we really didn't get into was property tax. And that's probably something we need to be thinking about moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. Because um, right now, Kansas is, is operating under an education block grant. Um, they, they repealed the old formula, put in a temporary two-year program to give them time to rewrite the formula. Uh, and what, what, what will happen is, is as that's rewritten, there's going to be a push for more revenue. And a, a good portion of that revenue comes from the 20 mills assessed on property. Uh, that goes to the state education fund. And as we saw throughout this year, there's a few urban legislators uh, who feel that ag is getting too good of a deal and are looking for ways to increase the amount of taxes that come from ag land. And most of that was come from changing the formula of how we value ag land under the use value formula. Uh, an early proposal uh, would have seen increases of nearly 500 percent, 
on ag land. Uh, and then we saw a later proposal that would have been just $3 per acre uh, on all land, uh, most of which would have impacted agriculture, uh, uh, a super majority of, of the land that would have got that $3 per acre tax was ag land. Uh, and so as we go into this uh, stage over the next couple of years of rewriting an education formula, those policies are going to resurface. Uh, we had the opportunity to, we didn't get really the opportunity to have a hearing on it. Uh, we did have a couple amendment votes in committee that failed 7-4, which is good for us, but we never had a full vote on the Senate floor to get senators on record. Uh, and I think because we didn't do that, uh, we're going to continue to come back and have to tell our story uh, and defend uh, the system that we have in place. Well, what are they hoping to achieve by, by taxing farmland? Not the way it's taxed now, but moving forward. I mean, how big of a hole are we talking about that potentially could be filled? Right. Well, well, it's it's you know it's hard to say you know how much money they're going to be after, but really what it is is uh, they're trying to shift the burden. Uh, off of their urban constituents and more onto the rural areas. And so one easy way of doing that uh, is to just simply say, well, ag land, we're going to artificially inflate uh, the value, uh, valuation we give it under our constitutional uh, taxation formula. Um, so, you know, that's how you got to that 500% because essentially what we did was try and convert it uh, to only uh, how much. Uh, income can we get off of it, not, just, not net income that takes into account expenses. Perfect. Aaron, thank you for your time today. Thank you for having me.